Okay. Continue. So today should be assembling and testing MS5607 boards. MS5607 is just a barometer that we use in the club a lot. Um, barometer measures pressure. Since this is called an absolute um, pressure sensor, it also measures um, temperature in order to like get a better reading or so you can better com compute the altitude. So we're going to be first soldering the headers on because you have two boards, near them have headers. Um, and then we'll be assembling the circuit on the breadboard. So I'll kind of show you guys how you can get like a five volt or a 3.3 volt sensor working with like a five volt board, which requires some logical shifting. But we'll also see since this uh, board doesn't do any of the like configuration really for you, we'll see how to configure the sensor so that way it is set up for I2C and it also is for setting up for the right address because what you learned about I2C is um, each device on an I2C bus has an address. And if you want to communicate with that device, you have to first send the address so it's ready and then you can communicate what register you want to access, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that the downside of that is if you have two of the same device you and you want them to be on the same bus, you want to have a way of changing the address. So most boards have like the last significant bit in the address is modifiable by setting a pin either high or low. So that's what we'll be doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then good practice with whenever working with sensors or other sensitive electronics is just decoupling capacitors. So you guys have a 0.1 microfarad um, capacitor in your kit today. And then for today, we're just going to be testing using a library I found um, for comes with Arduino IDE. So we'll see how to use the library manager for Arduino IDE. And then for anyone who's interested and if we have like extra time, we can try soldering the decoupling capacitor onto the MS5607 board. Um, so you have like actually two different sets of capacitors. One of them looks like this, which is like what you saw on there. Arduino has got through hole feeds on the side, and then the other ones look like, okay, I don't have the same ones with me, but they look kind of like this. These are actually resistors, but they're, they're, they're the same kind of package. They're just really tiny rectangular prisms uh, that are for surface mount soldering. They're a lot more compact. So, oh, come on. so uh, I guess we can start soldering the headers. Um, this should be mostly familiar. Uh, just through hole soldering. The one trick that I'll say is, you guys all have breadboards like this, right? I don't know if they're exactly like this, yep. but they should be something uh, like this. I am holding up the exact breadboard that they have with the headers on it. Awesome. So if I Do what Tyler's it. showing. It's uh, not going to focus on my guess. <laughs> but what uh, Tyler did there is, is what I was, would suggest is just like, placing the headers on the breadboard spaced out as they are on the uh, on the so, MS5607 breakout, which is this one. I don't know if I actually showed you guys that. It's yeah. the small green one. So the correct spacing is the lot, the two, the two rows next to the middle line on the breadboard. Um, yeah. Can you if guys you send a picture? It's hard to keep yeah. seeing who's because because it only shows who's talking yeah i keep forgetting that i have mine set up very differently okay um well this picture kind of shows what he's saying just like you place the pins on the breadboard and oh i didn't want to do that and then you can just place the board on top of it and that keeps the pins properly spaced so that way when you put it on the board it, it just fits on there Is that confusing long, still? Long side down? Yes, yeah, long, long side, side down. down. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, in this picture, I don't have the chip on there. I just didn't have an extra one with the chip that wasn't soldered already for the picture. Don't worry about that. Hopefully, all of yours have chips on them. If they don't, let me know. <laughs> That's an issue. <laughs>
And then I also then, so I sent both these pictures to the intro avionics chat because it's easier to use Discord on my phone. Um, and the second one shows, I just like dropped the board and it went right into the pins. Okay, so I was a little bit silly and I didn't like prepare to do soldering on camera. Is there anyone that thinks that they would really benefit from that? Or do you guys think you can kind of do it? And then if you guys have issues, you can point your webcam down. I could kind of instruct you. So, I mean, I can point my webcam down. I just have a nicer soldering iron because um, I have it all set up right now. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, so I have to move to the other room if I want to do soldering. So this is a little bit more convenient. Yeah. I will get this set up correctly. And then, I don't Sorry, know, I need- long, the pins are up, right? Uh, the, the long one. side down gets oh. pushed into the breadboard. Yep. Uh, the problem is it's a wide angle camera, so getting close enough for this to work correctly is hard. Okay, I'm gonna to try to talk to see if I can make the video switch to me. Um, can I do that? Did that work? Yes, it did. I spotlighted the video. <laughs> so you can see here, it's out of focus, but there's the little chip on the board. So then the same way that we soldered when we had the other, Ugh. nope. So then you just solder the same way we soldered last time um, when we did the original boards. Nope, is this not? Nope, nope, it's not hot enough. <laughs> How hot do you run your soldering iron, John? John, you're muted. I muted myself so that I would focus on you. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, yeah, I, usually... I spotlighted it, so it should just stay on me. Okay. Okay, sweet. So I usually stay around like 300 degrees. Um, sometimes I go a little bit higher. If you're soldering to a ground connection, um, more likely than not, the ground connection is also connected to a plane. So that's going to have a lot higher surface area, take longer to heat up. So when you're doing ground connections, sometimes I'll raise the temperature. Um, but usually around like 3, 320. Hmm. Uh, sorry, I got here a bit late. Um, is there anything we have to have on top of the green chip? Uh, nope. So the green chip goes on. If you look at the video, it should, it should have spotlighted my video. Um, you put the two little black bars, the shorter of the black bars. So you have two sets of little of pins. So you have the longer set and the shorter set. set, set. So you want to use the shorter sets. Got it, okay. And then you take the green board and you just line up the holes on the green board with the pins so that it slides on like that. Do you put the, do you put the short end of the sticks on or the long end of the sticks on? Um, so the short end goes onto the green board. So the long ends go down into your breadboard. Okay. It doesn't matter where we put them, we just have a... Um, so the correct spacing is the two inmost rows along the middle line of the breadboard. So like if you look at the video, you can kind of see what that looks like. How do you get the pins to stay in your breadboard? They push in pretty hard. Yeah, don't want to break them, but if it's long, if it's long end, then geez. Yeah, um, they do push in pretty hard. Um, what would I recommend? I mean, I done this enough where I just did them with my fingers, but you can also, if you use like a pair of pliers or the pair of um, snips, you can like press down, you can press down on them. Oh, one of my pins, like for, it slid, it, like the actual um, plastic slid. And so now one of the pins is actually bigger. You usually you can kind of like push them back 
it's just kind of an Ow, when that happens. Fuck. Uh, that, that hurts. If you have like, do you, don't do it with your fingers. Do it with like pliers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll figure something out. Or like, just like you can use sometimes your desk because if like three of them are fine and one of them's different, you can kind of just like push Tap it. holding the plastic, and until it, they kind of like meet together. Yeah, I got it. I shove it in there. Yeah, just push hard. Yeah, they do push hard. And if you can find something to push, so you push on the metal part of the pin instead of on the plastic, then that way it's not you're not going to slip the plastic out of place. Yeah. But don't do it with your finger. <laughs> that will hurt. That might go through your finger. <laughs> well, break the skin. That's, that sounds worse. <laughs> Or equally bad. I don't think isn't that a true it's true that we don't have like a single rocket that doesn't have some human blood on it. What the fuck? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. All right, and then we just and then we just solder so to keep it like in place. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like some I'm of those gonna... fins, those are razor sharp. I've yeah. worked on those before, but those are dangerous. What do I need? I need You said the long side into the board. Yes, long side into the board. Uh, okay, this is really hard. I made a mistake. I put the camera on top of my solder spool, so I had to just cut it so I can actually go through, and I will solder these pins. I'm probably not as good at soldering as Ben because I don't do it as often as he does. That's fine. We won't say anything. Can't get them to stay on the board. You can't get them to stay on the board? No. I, I oh. guess I'm pushing hard enough. Yeah, so push harder and like you could try putting them into the board a little bit and then flipping the board over and like pushing it into your, your desk. Nice. Um, you might want to put like the plastic bag in between or something to keep it from like stabbing your desk or the box that you got the breadboard in would be a better idea. Uh, is that how did it crooked? Does it matter that my pins aren't like flush? Like the black part isn't flush with the board. That should be fine. Okay. As long as there is enough length on both sides, it needs to have enough length on the side that connects to the board so that way you can actually solder it. And then there has to be enough length on the other side so that way it can push far enough into the breadboard to make a good connection. But as long as both those are, like if it's slightly crooked, it's fine. Yeah, like it's poking through, it's just slightly shorter on one end. Is yeah. that okay. what you mean? Yeah, well, I mean, we'll we'll see if you run into an issue, and if and if you do, I can look at a picture and get a better idea. Yes, I got the pin in. <laughs> okay, so I don't know how well this video is coming through because I'm focusing really hard on soldering because I don't do this enough. It's low quality, but it's okay. Yeah, that's the problem with buying a thirty dollar camera on Amazon, <laughs> especially thirty dollar camera in COVID times when normal cameras are selling for a lot more than that. Is this all the soldering we're doing for a while or should I keep my stuff out? Um, so the, we're just gonna do the same thing on the other board that you have. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so we're so, gonna do those two boards. And then if you really want to, um, and if we have time later, we might like do the surface mount soldering for the capacitor on the, the green board, like where those two um, square pads are, but that's totally optional. So, I put pins in. Can we get started on the blue one? Yes. Yep. I just I haven't even finished the green one yet, mostly because oh, I like the soldering iron, but it's being annoying. I probably don't have it hot enough. Do 
do do do do do do do do Okay. Very low quality that you can't actually see. <laughs> but I got it soldered. <laughs> um, then the hard part's probably getting it off the board, but I don't actually think we have to take it off, right, John? We can just leave it where it is. Yeah, you can do where it is for now, or for at least today. Mm -hmm. So then I'm just going to start working on the other board, which is this little. No, oh, you can't even see it, but it's the blue board, and it uses the longer headers. It's funny when I bought the blue boards, I didn't even realize they're literally just knockoff Spark Fun boards. Like they took the exact same Eagle files and just fabbed it, and then sold it for cheaper on Amazon. Okay, so the one thing with these is they are they are the same length. Okay. No, no, I think the space is slightly different, right? Yeah, I think it's longer. One more. One more um, out? Yeah. Okay. Oh, see, I, I screwed up one of my pins, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think the breadboard you guys are using is stiffer than mine, I guess. Wait, how many in between do we... How many pins in between should we be? Um, For which one? For the, the blue board? The second one. Between the blue and green. For a second one, I would oh, just... Oh, between the blue and green, um, you can put it wherever you want. I'm just putting it kind of close. Okay. Um, now I've got to get these pins into the board. Luckily, there's no components on the back of these boards. And, so um, I think the strat for removing them is going to be a flathead screwdriver if your boards are that stiff. Um, and then, so it's one pin further out on the other side. So whereas last time we went on the ones right next to the row, I think this is one pin farther out. This is on the positive negative side? I mean, it doesn't matter. Well, um, so you, from the middle. So I, so I have them across. Oh, so it could be either, so it could be either side. <laughs> yeah, it yep. doesn't matter. Yep. Oh, we should, um, for those who who isn't really familiar with how breadboards are laid out, is is there a couple of you? I, guess I can go over that real quick. I guess I wouldn't hurt. Um, let me see if I can bring up a good picture. Uh, oh, I'm a bit busy soldering right now, so you can take your time. It should have the level converter side. Oh, Put it down. Sorry, what was that? Like when we lay it out on the breadboard, we should be seeing the side that says level converter, or is that upside down? Um, level converter should, well, it doesn't, I suppose it doesn't really matter, but I would put that side down. Down, because oh, yeah. the other side has the labels for the pins. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay, so actually the, most of your breadboards should probably have like a plastic covering on this side. This is the back side of the breadboard, but I have it peeled off on mine and you can kind of see like the years, like metal contacts that kind of go down this way. And so that just bridges each of the pins and each like how I'm holding it right now, like these vertical rows. And then it's different for the plus and negative side. Uh, they, for that, those ones, they bridge it for the length of the board. And that's just to make it convenient. So you can have like your five, sorry, finding webcam, your five volt could go like up here and then your ground could be like down here. And then you can connect a bunch of things to it and they'll all be connected for you because they're already connected on the back here through the metal bracket thingy. Um, and then the rows connect. So it's just like a convenient way of wiring things together without having to like splice, not splice, or I guess that is the right word, splice the wire together yourself. The breadboard does it for you because those rows are already connected and then these are connected. OK, 
okay. I messed up. The set that Molly has didn't have the pins for the green board. <laughs> um, um, you can solder jumper wires to the pins and that will work. They're just a pain to remove later if you do want to add headers later because you need to use the solder sucker. But if you, are you, wait, is Molly on campus? Oh, okay. Yeah, Molly is. Um, okay, so you soldered the green one, but not the blue board. So, oh, wait. Uh, oh, okay. Well, actually, we only use, okay, no, we, we use like, um, one, two, three, four. We use like eight of the pins, so we still need to solder eight wires to it. Oh, that'd be um, a lot. Um... <laughs> It's up to you. You can solder wires to that now, or if you want to, you can just hang out and then follow along with the video. Um, or um, I could and solder them later. Yeah, I mean, I could try to run you another one of the boards. It's up to you. On the blue or on the green board, do you have the other two pins hanging off, or did you like cut them off? Does it matter which way we align the green board or the blue board? Not really. No. As long as you have the um, the little black boxes pointing up. Oh, awesome! Awesome. <laughs> um. So the problem is now is you use the. So you have to solder all of these pins. Um, on the blue board, yeah. So, John, do you know which pins on the blue board we need? Because now sh she has... So we're only using eight. two channels. We're only using two channels, so you can you cannot solder LV3, LV4, HV3, or HV4 if you want. But, yeah, if, if you cut them off of the other set, then you can do it. It's just, like, slightly more awkward because it's two pieces instead of one for each side. Oh, you have the right amount? Okay. Because she had the six headers, but then she cut them for the oh oh four. oh okay. I didn't realize she'd cut them. That 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 is. I'm not true. sure if it would fit. If you think. That is true. It would not have fit. Oh, my soldering iron keeps turning off. Cause I have it set to the two minutes, and then it turns off. <laughs> I bought one of the ones the lab has. Mm. Those ones are nice. I have a bit of a cheaper, but also decent soldering iron. It's not like a, it's less name brand, but it works pretty well. Uh, so I used to have the cheaper Weller one, which we almost bought for everybody, but people complained when I proposed a $3,000 budget. Yeah. <laughs> <to be> on. <laughs> SMH. Uh, where on the board do we place the black pins for the blue? It's, um, so it should be, so just like place the pins on the board with like one additional space than you did for the other board. And then the side that actually has the, the MOSFETs and the resistors and all the components should be up. And then the side that says all converter should be on the bottom. Does that clarify? Awesome. Cool. I'm still working through soldering these, so. <laughs> I'm definitely more out of practice than I realized when it came to soldering. Some of my some of my pins just have bulbous pieces of solder on them. 
as long as the solder is like connected to the pad on the bottom, that's okay. Anyways. Wait, wait, I'm starting. Wait, yeah, you're starting up tops, right? That's all. Yeah. Yes. Is it okay if a solder connects to or no? No, you'll want to uh, get rid of any shorts or bridges between two pins. Okay. So you can usually just do that by like moving your soldering iron between the two a few times and it should clean it up. Yeah. If not, you might have a little bit too much solder and you can use the solder sucker. Fuck. That might, that might be what I have to do. Do I have like a few minutes to go wash my hands and stuff? If we're gonna be, if I, uh, yes, this is the yeah. end of the soldering. Okay. I'll be back. I swear I cannot get this pin in the board. This last one. Is it on the blue board or the green board? Or the blue one? You might not need it. Um, is it like on one of the corners? Well, no, I'm just saying I can't get like the, what is it called? The header in? Oh, like the whole row? Like into the breadboard. I'm just huh. having a lot of trouble. All the other ones worked. But is it just one pin or is it one whole row? It's a row. Oh. I'm trying. So, I mean, I'd recommend... Um, what's going to be the... Whoa. Oh, okay. I shut off my soldering iron and my monitor turns off because they're on the same power strip. Um, you can use like any like flat object to kind of like push on the pins for you. Any like flat, um, like plastic something. And that usually helps. Um, in know. your kit, in your kits, I think you have, um, I know you have the pair of like little cutters and you could use the side of those. I mean, I, I've used my own phone before for that. <laughs> Probably shouldn't, but <laughs> use the back of the case. I mean, what are you scratching? So, yeah. I've used probably this calculator a couple dozen times too, my, my TI 84. Bruh. <laughs> oh. Can't push on those pins in my finger, so I just grab the nearest thing. <laughs> Someone else's hand. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it to somebody else's fingers. I'm not that cruel. Uh, yeah. There, there have been times when like things in the lab have resulted to us causing ourselves more physical pain than needed to make them work. <laughs> oh, I don't know if any of you guys heard this, but we've officially gotten access to our lab finally. We did. I didn't hear this. Yes. Is it just back lab or the full lab? Uh, full lab. Sweet. Yep. I think starting like next week or something. Fuck me, dude. Two pins got connected again. I use the pack of sticky notes. I use the pack of sticky notes and it works. Ah, uh, uh, fuck okay. me. Okay, never mind. We only have access to the back lab. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. We don't have a TA yet. All right, John, how do I use this sucker thing? Um, I don't have one on me, but there should be like a long kind of Is it this? thing. If, and you just kind of like push down on it from the top. Until yeah, it makes I see. It and then there should be a button on the side that releases it. And then I see. it springs up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the sucker. Uh, could you um, uh, put in a picture of the uh, finished board into the Discord? Yep, I'll do that right now. Thank you. And sorry, you said that was the last soldering thing for today? Yep. Okay, cool. Come on, focus. Focus, no. My phone's like, move back to improve focus. Well, oh, apparently moving back and zooming in works better. Yeah, there we go. That's a good one. So my professor just posted our exam, um, and it's due on Sunday. 
That sounds normal. Take home exam. <laughs> Do Sunday. Yeah, I've had that. I had one that we had like a week to do. It was just like a more intensive homework. I mean, that makes they makes sense if you like a week to do it, but they only made it available on Thursday, Thursday night. And it's due this Sunday or like the following Sunday? Let's see. Oh, he, he just hit the exam is two problems from the textbook. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it open notes? Is it open notes? Yeah, it's take home. We have three days to do it. <laughs> that's, what all my, that's what all my quizzes and midterms have been for one of my classes. Yeah, it's the problems from the textbook, but he changed the values. Yeah, yeah. The worst, <laughs> the worst part is it's not like even that's not enough for it for like a lot of the people in the class. We just they still check answers with each other. Well, I'm glad I haven't canceled my check account yet. <laughs> I think I whiffed too much of a, of the, of the vapor. Oh God. Yeah, no matter how much like ventilation I have, I always get a headache when we do. Yeah, stuff. fuck. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm out, I'm out, guys. <laughs> yeah. I whiffed like, I had a fan and it didn't, and my door open, my, my window open, and it wasn't enough. I think I whiffed like at least half of it. <laughs> Oh God! I need water. <laughs> okay, sorry guys. <laughs> well, the one thing I've learned is next year, buy some fans. I'll buy fans next year. And solid core wire. <laughs> and solid core wire. Um, what other things? Uh, I mean, I'd like to do a different kit. Like, I also buy the mentors a kit. Mm, I'd like oh. that. Molly, what what door are you in EV or IV? Because I guess those are the only two that don't open. Yeah. Oh, okay. Goodness. Wait, what? Yeah, the windows they kind of open, but not really. EV. Okay. Roof. Oh, is it like where thing where you open no, it and they like open it all? They like they don't open. Oh wait, they don't open at all. No, the windows That's don't terrible. open at all. Yeah, that sounds really bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, that doesn't even sound legal. Like, what wow. the fuck Because in happens IV, if like, when I lived in IV, the windows opened, like, like, like two or no, three inches. No, they don't open at all. Oh, that's... Stuest windows? Pretty nice. Oh, that they open sucks. All the way. That's awful. I... So, my Stuest window was not closed the entire time I was there. I opened it the day I got in the dorm, and I closed it the day I left. How though? Did it, did it ever get cold, and you wanted to close the door? I would close it most of the way and turn the heater up. What? It's like raining. Gotta get that airflow. The the heater was so powerful. Oh yeah, that those heaters. Like and I, I turned it off of low of like twice. <laughs> I don't think we ever put ours past low when we were so i also the left the window year. open during a snowstorm once and i couldn't close the window till after the snow melted <laughs> we we actually had a snow day my freshman year we had a snow day what we had a snow day no it, it's not like a day but we did not have a snow day <laughs> oh what do you mean what, you mean like no school okay yeah like we had an actual snow day my freshman year yeah, those are gone now, aren't they? <laughs> They're online anyway, so. Yeah. All right, yeah. where is every, is, are people still soldering? I think I'm done soldering. This is what mine looks like. Not, for, not my best solders, but it'll do. The blue board's kind of hard to solder. I unfortunately cannot see your camera because I can only see Tyler's camera, so I'm oh, not sure if you can oh. show us things. <laughs> uh, cancel spotlight. Can I show? Wait, can I? Can I manually bring up someone's camera? Is that a thing? Yeah, you just click it. I think. Huh? Okay. Yeah. I. I guess I don't know Zoom. Do I? Bruh. Okay. Well, I can see you now if you wanted. <laughs> okay, right, right here. Oh, what is that? 
bridge thingy. Is that connected to anything? Wait, which the... bringy? Oh, no, that one's just really tall. Okay. It's just a tall one. If you look at it from the side, you can see the height, sort of. It's like... Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just like a, yeah, it's like a spike. I didn't really want to deal with getting that suck, but... I mean, I guess I could suck that one out, but... If it's not shorting anything, then it's not doing it, and it's fine. Yeah, I don't think it's touching anything. I mean, I could always... It is pretty easy to suck it out, I guess. Just, uh... How about... Is everyone else... Uh, like finishing up or done? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm gonna go wash my hands. Let me grab. Um, you guys all have wire strippers, right? Because I still don't know what you have in your kit, actually. Oh, I'm pretty sure you have wire strippers. Someone show those, please, because not everyone might know what that looks like. But these yellow things? I don't think so. <laughs> Unless there's a really weird wire stripper that I don't, that I'm not familiar with. I have like the clipper thingies. I don't use the yellow ones. Yeah, I don't see anything. Ah, uh, sorry. So maybe that is it. Okay, yeah, that is that's a wire stripper. I'm just not familiar <laughs> with that kind. Okay, that's a little funky. Um, so I can't demonstrate as well because I know some. How many people don't have jumper wires and instead have to like strip wire? I know there's always a couple of people because I had to distribute some wire. Um, let me grab my wire strippers real quick so I can demonstrate kind of how to do it. Can we get rid of the PowerPoint so we can see everyone better? Or is the PowerPoint necessary? Um, I don't. John! Hello. Wrong John. My roommate's also named John, and he was... Is that NUAV John? No, it is Peyton's sophomore year roommate, John. Oh. And I was roommate again. Um, oh. I grabbed wire clip, uh, strippers, but not actual wire. <laughs> Emma, Emma was asking if we could stop the presentation while we're working on stuff so that people can see the people better. Oh, is that a thing? I can stop sharing. I don't know how you guys have Zoom configured because I have my Zoom configured very weirdly. Like, wait, wait. Am I when... still sharing? No, you're not. You're not sharing anymore. Um, no. Is everybody? Is anybody still working on soldering? No. Okay. I will tell John to move on to the next step when he gets back. John! Yes? You can move on to the next step. I think everyone's done. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to talk for a little bit, and I think um, let's see. Okay. Sorry, I'm looking at my own slides to figure out what I did. So this is just kind of an overview of what we have to do with the breakout. So the breakout, basically you can see, oh, I'm not sharing anymore. Let me fix that. <laughs> okay. Can everyone see my presentation fine? Yeah. Okay, cool. So the breakout just takes the pins from this barometer and then breaks them out into something that you can breadboard, kind of. Um, the only added component here is this capacitor, which we're going to be subbing out for a through-hole capacitor. And then later on, if you want to, you can try and solder that. I gave you guys some uh, search out capacitors for that. Um, so this pin is our voltage input, the power input. The PS pin, that's short for protocol select. That's how we're going to be selecting between I2C and SPI, which is the alternative um, protocol. We're going to be using I2C because that's what the library I found uses. Uh, this is just ground. Um, then we have two pins. These are both tied to chip select. Um, you don't have to like, they're, they're internally connected, I believe. So we only need to use one of them. So chip select is usually used in SPI to um, tell the board that you're trying to speak to it. And so that way you don't have to have an address. But in this case, chip select um, 
determines the last significant bin the address. So we'll be studying that. And then SDO, that is slave data out. SDI is slave data in. And then SCLK is clock. And I believe first I2C. I2C is a two wire standard. We only have a clock wire and then a two way communication wire. So I believe the SDO pin is the one that we didn't use. Um, but yeah, so I can open up the data sheet, but instead I've just kind of pasted the relevant portion. So first thing we want to do is connect the um, the PS pin to low. That will select the, oh, sorry. We want to connect the PS pin to high, and that will um, set the device to I2C mode. And that just means, um, sucked in high just means logic level high. And logic level high is equal to 3.3 volts in this case. Or, and um, there's like a certain threshold, but 3.3 volts is what we're going to use for our logic level high. And then low is just tying to ground. Um, so that pin on your boards, the PS pin is the second pin. So we usually count one, I think, usually count the marked pin, which is the one that is marked with the dot um, first. So this is pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four, pin five, pin six, pin seven, pin eight. So pin two is PS. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll tie that high. So we're going to need, you guys all have your Arduinos out. I should have asked that first, probably. Um, and if you have jumper wires, it will be easier. And if you don't, you'll have to make the wires. Um, Um, the important part is if you make your wires, make sure you twist the um, the copper in the wire together because um, that makes it a lot easier to get it into the holes on the board and stuff. And that's for the people that I didn't give solid core wire to earlier today. Oh, um, you did get core. some people solid core wire. Yeah, I there was someone else that said in chat at like 6 o'clock and see that, so okay. I'm sorry. Um, but everyone else who reached out to me, got some. Um, do you guys know how to use the wire strippers? I, I can demonstrate with my wire strippers, but they seem to be different from what you guys have in your kit. Uh, I mean, I might be doing it wrong, or these might be really crappy. It's just taking me a really long time to do it. Yeah, I think they're just kind of crappy. They're, they're pretty crappy. <laughs> that is another thing. That is another thing on my list of I should have. I'm gonna get better next time. Is better wire strippers. I actually, fun fact, I used to strip wires using my multi-tool knife for like literally years because I was too cheap to buy a wire stripper. <laughs> so for like all of high school, I didn't own a wire stripper, and I just used a knife. So and I had an really ancient <laughs> one. I had an ancient one that I found in our shed back home. It was like a big one. It, like it, the smallest it went till it was like, like it barely could work with like these kind of wires. It was designed for like big, like battery Fire wires hole. and like yeah. wall wires and stuff. Yeah. My dad had one of those too. That was like really rusty. I tried it once and it was just like, not only was it kind of like rusty and it didn't move great. It, it was just not for such thin wire, so it just didn't work at all. So yeah, that's what I used, just use a knife instead. It's really tedious and really annoying. So that's why we have wire strippers. So on that note, how badly will this go if we don't have wire strippers? Well, you do, because... they're in your kit. Oh, I've oh, had wait. my own soldering iron. <laughs> oh. sorry. Wait, do you, David, so you don't have wire strippers and you don't have, were you the one who didn't get the, the wires? I gave him I wire, wire, but no instruments. <laughs> I have uh, scissors and pliers. But... You can use scissors too, it's really annoying. Oh, <laughs> I no. didn't use scissors before. Um, 
I mean, at least he has solid core wire, so he doesn't have to. All right. So I mean, like, these are basically just I'm using them. This is I'm literally just like kind of like s slicing in a circle and then pulling off sections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you like you like turn it around the blade with your like thumb. It's like really weird, and it doesn't work very well. But then usually you can get it to like deep in enough that you can kind of pull it out with your fingers, and it sucks. That's why you okay. buy wire shippers instead of being cheap. But in this case, <laughs> it's our fault. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, yeah. This is why... <sighs> yeah. This is... This... I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I knew that. I would have just given you some jumper wires I have. That's fine. <laughs> uh, oh, I think I got it. <laughs> And we will be using, let's see. I used 12 jumper wires, it looks like. You might be able to do it with a couple fewer, but yeah, you might want to make around. 12. Um. Hey, okay, so we're connecting this to 3.3, you said? To the 3v3 on the Arduino? Yeah, so we're going to connect quite a few things to 3.3 volts. We're going to connect quite a few things to ground and then a couple things to 5 volts. Wait, can you even so that's where the, um, can you even do that? Can you even connect multiple things to 3v3? I only well, see that's what one. I'm going to show. So oh. that's where like these rows that are labeled like plus and negative come in handy because since they're all internally connected i can do like i can plug this wire into positive and then plug that into 3.3 on my arduino and then i'm sorry i don't know where the webcam is and then anything that's connected to this row this top row here is going to also be connected to that 3.3 so that's just a convenient feature of the breadboard i see okay and then so for us, we want to just do, are you going to, well, never mind, never mind. First part connected to FreeB3. Free. So the, um, yeah, the first thing I guess we want to do, or at least that I have in the presentation, is to set the protocol select pin to high. So that pin's pin two. Um, the one like right below the pin that's marked with the, the white dot. We also want to probably wire power. That's not explicitly in this presentation, but that's pretty important. You need power. Um, so you're going to connect the uh, VDD pin, which is pin one and the ground pin, which is pin three um, to ground. And you're gonna put your through hole capacitor in between this VDD pin and ground pin. And that does your decoupling here. That's your bypass capacitor. I guess so that's the actual VDD term. goes to V plus, right? Yes. To 3.3, .3. okay. Yeah, sounds like there's the name scheme VDD and VSS, and VSS is the one that goes to ground. Thing. Wait, VDD goes. Wait, how do I connect? How do I connect? Like, how do I connect the pins? Do I go to? Do I just go to the ones to the holes next to it on the breadboard, or? Yes. Yeah. So each row, like they're labeled, or I think they are on your boards. They're labeled on most boards. Yeah, ABCD. Like, they're rows, like one. To, oh, are they ABCD? Oh yeah. No, well, no, they have no. columns ABCD and they have rows. ABCD is yeah. the columns. Yeah. Okay. So the rows are connected. Oh, I see. Okay. And so, yeah, once you connect it, it's good for that whole rail on that side. Yeah. Those are all connected by the breadboard. Got it. Okay. So you said two goes to 3v3? Uh, one, yeah. Two also goes to 3.3. That'll connect to logic level high, which tells the barometer that we are using I2C. Well, the main thing is that 3v3 should be connected to the plus, which will then activate the whole column. Yes. Okay. 
And then and you then... can connect other things to the column. Yeah, got it. Is pin one also power, and then pin three is ground, did you say? That's correct. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, let me see. I can probably paste a couple of the image, this image in the chat because this image is a helpful one. Um, I'm having a hard time getting the capacitor to go. Oh, there we go. I got it. Um, it's hard. Sometimes it can be hard to get the capacitor to go into the holes. Um, you just got to be careful not so you can bend it so that you can get better leverage. Wait, wait, wait. We need to put a capacitor somewhere? Shit. Yeah, the capacitor is going to go in between pins one and three. Can you download a picture that's in a Google slide? I don't um, see the best way to do that. I can, I guess. I mean, you can copy it and put it in the Discord if that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, that would be the easiest way. That's what I tried to, but it didn't seem to work. So I just do it wrong? And not, I guess. Yeah. The capacitor, one Earth. goes in one, the other one goes in three. Yep. To the rescue. Okay. John, does it matter if the what side of the like what side of the wire the capacitor is on, or it, I don't. So the capacitor is not polarized because it's ceramic. Yeah, no, 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 I know. But does it matter if you like have the 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 wire before? So here's or after. the board, and then you have the the capacitor and then the wire, or the wire and the capacitor. Does that matter? Oh, okay. So the order that you put things on the breadboard in this row or in this column as I'm showing it right now does not matter at all. They're all just connected together. So you're not changing anything by changing the order, if that makes sense. Okay, so it doesn't matter how if you do capacitor wire or wire capacitor. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. You're using a capacitor that looks like a resistor, right? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by looks like a resistor, but it looks like this. Oh, I have the wrong Oh, there's one. two of them, though, so it doesn't matter which one? Nope. And then you, because you, you also have resistors. Oh, that would be why. Yep. Share my screen. God, it takes forever to strip these wires. So the cap, so the, the capacitor goes between the three volt and ground on the barometer, right? Yes. Okay. I'm also gonna like the data sheet in chat in case you guys want to see what a data sheet looks like. But all the relevant portions that we need today are in this um, slideshow already. So I can also copy that in for reference if people want it. Does okay. tape remnant on my capacitor matter? Nope. Should be fine. As, as, long, long, as, as, the, as long as the end of the pin is metal and not like tape at the end of the pin, you're fine. Yeah, that's fine. It might, not, might even work without the capacitor entirely since we're not using any, like the supply from the Arduino shouldn't be very noisy, but it's always just good practice to have it there. Can I talk about the next thing, or are we still like splice or stripping wire and all that? Yeah, can you just like repeat the thing so far? Because I've been stripping wire most of the sure, time. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah, I, I might be going through things too quickly. Just let me know. Um, but so basically, this isn't explicitly in the the slideshow, but we need to first and foremost power our chip. To do that, we'll put pin one and uh, two plus 3.3 .3 volts, because that's what our chip wants. It wants 3.3 .3 volts. And then ground just goes to ground. And then 
the PS pin, which is this pin two, um, is connected, is the protocol select pin. We're gonna tie that to high, and that's gonna tell the barometer that we are using I2C mode and not SPY mode. Um, and then just to like, be clear, when I say pin one, um, these pins, there's like a, there's a way to count them. And that is like the marked pin, which will have like either an asterisk, like a star or like a circle or something like that will be pin one. And then you count from that row. So one, two, three, or yeah, one, two, three, four. And then the next pin is five here. You don't go across, you go like that. Can you guys see my cursor? Cause I'm using my cursor and I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we can. Okay, sweet. And then, so then this is five, six, seven, eight. So if I say pin seven, that's one, this one. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. Also the pins should be labeled, but they're labeled on the bottom of the board. Um, you can blame Connor who designed this last year in comp rocketry if you want to. <laughs> but also it's just, isn't, it's a small board, so. so. You said connect ground to ground? Yes. Where's ground on the board? So we're going to need to connect to the ground of our Arduino. That's what we're wiring up to. Um, so just like I showed how to um, hook up the 3.3 volt kind of com like this, you're going to do the same thing with ground, but with the, the one that's marked negative. OK. And then everything in that row is going to be connected to 3.3 and negative because the breadboard connects them for you. So I have 3.3 connected to positive, and then we're connecting pins one and three to positive? Sorry, can you repeat that from the beginning? I have 3.3 connected to positive, and then now we connect pins one and three to positive. Pins right. one and three from the, yeah? Yep, pin one's your supply pin, and then pin three is the uh, protocol select pin. Got it. In this case, we want that to be high. Yeah, and high is 3.3 volts, low is five volts, I think. Low is ground. Oh. Okay, so, want... yeah, low just stands for a logic level low, which is, in this case, ground, and most cases ground, and then logic level high is usually 3.3 volts or 5 volts, in this case, um, well, actually, it gets a little bit complicated, that's why we're doing level shifting. Um, the barometer wants a logic level high of 3.3 volts, but the Arduino that we built is based around 5 volts. So we need to shift that that modulated signal from like a five volt peak to like a 3.3 volt peak, which is what the blue board does for us. Okay, but it's, pin, okay. it's pins one and three from green, correct? Oh, my apologies. Um, pins one and two are 3.3 volts. Um, pin one is the supply pin, pin two is protocol select, and then pin three is ground. I'm sorry. Oh, so it's pins one and two go to positive, not I and mean, three goes to ground. Yeah. Yes. Okay. My apologies there. All good. I'm just doing pin one. I'm just doing pin one right now, so I haven't ruined anything yet. And if, since I didn't say explicitly, I'll say it explicitly now. Um, probably shouldn't power your board while you're doing this. It's just generally bad practice. Although you might not try it, it's just not really good to be plugging things in while the Arduino is powered. Yeah, you're not going to zap yourself with five volts, but you could zap something else. <laughs> yeah. Or someday you'll be working on something with enough voltage that it could actually zap you. <laughs> Um, when I was little, I was taking apart a, it was a, an, um, a computer, like a electronic typewriter, which I don't know if you guys even, I, they were, Why before, were you doing that? well, they were before my time, but I don't know. Yeah. I was like eight or something and I found it up in our attic and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to take that apart. Well, I took All it right. apart and there was a capacitor in it. 
If you want to guess what happened, I got shocked by the capacitor when I took it apart. They still have any scars or what? No, it just was like, a and I was like, oh, I'm not touching that again. But it reminds me of a similar story that I had where in middle, no, I was high school, like sophomore year, we were learning about relays in some class. So we were, we had this, these big like lights. I don't know if they were LED. They were larger lights that we had to mount to a board, like a stop or like a traffic light. And we were learning how to like wire them to the Arduino using the relays. And I touched the back of the board when it was still plugged in, back of the relay board. So I got shocked by the higher voltage it was dealing with. But it wasn't bad, so I, I was fine. But yeah, be careful. Unplug things when you're working with high voltage and low voltage too, probably. All right, how are we doing? I don't mean to keep probing if you guys are still working, but I, I just generally don't know. I, I'm here right now. I've got my power and ground my decoupling capacitor. Sweet. Yeah, I um, think I'm there too. All right, uh, and I think I'm ready for. All right, let's go on then. Um, so we did protocol select. select. So I dug through the library that we're going to be using for you guys and found that they define the device address as 0x76, which is just 76 in um, hexadecimal. Um, and then we can look at the data sheet here. It's 111, blah, 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 where C is a complementary value of pin CSB. So basically, if we were to set CSB to be low, this would be 111011. Zero, and if it's high, it'd be one 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 zero one one one. And in this case, if we want it to be seventy six, and we need it to be one 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 zero one one zero, um, you can look up how to do hexadecimal conversion if you like. Um, so that tells me that this pin needs to be set low. So to set it low, we'll be tying the chip select pin to ground. Um, you'll notice in the picture I sent in Discord and that I showed in the slideshow, there's two chip select pins. They're internally connected, so we only need to wire one of them. The other one you can just leave and, and not do anything with. Is that CSB1 and CSB2? And there's yes. the two bottom pins on the board? Yeah, pins four and five. So power one of four and five? Yeah. Uh, Pull it so, to ground. You wanted to go to ground. Oh yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Pull it to ground, and then the other pin don't don't touch. So Wait, free goes to ground. Is ground just negative? Oh, and then we attach ground to like a different row. Is that what it is? A different column. Yeah. So, so ground can is connected to the negative column on your board. So you you can connect ground from your breadboard from your Arduino to the, the negative. blue row. Yep. Does that be same side or a does it matter? Column. Uh, you can do no. You can do the other side of the board if you want. Okay. Yeah. So this is what mine looks like right now. If that helps anybody. But basically, I've got like 3.3 volts in ground coming out of the Arduino. They go into two rows of the breadboard over here, a positive, and negative, and then I have those hooked up to my board. Sorry, it's not super neat because I'm using these super long jumpers, but. Hopefully you guys get the general idea. What do pin six, seven, and eight do? Or six, seven, and eight. Or like how so, should I wire them? Um, I will we'll get to that next. Um Everyone got that last wire in? Um, I'm still, I've, I'm getting, I'm getting, I still need to do two more wires, free to ground and ground to negative and free to ground. That's why I want to. Oh, you're still stripping them. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I will them. also post the, basically the schematic that we're making. Um, it's this schematic, which is actually already in the data sheet for you. Actually, 
this isn't super helpful because we need to also connect the logic level shifter. Um, are the people that are stripping wire comfortable with me talking about the next thing, or should we just wait? Uh, I'm okay if you move on, I think. I'm probably gonna have to go back and like look at the thing at the end anyway and connect all the stuff. So it's all right. Yeah, sorry to the guys that don't have smartphone kits. Yeah, I think we need to. I think the toolkit that we got is fine, but we should probably make our own kit with the electronics we want to use. But we just didn't have, I guess, things fully planned out enough to do that. Yeah, the we like we should have added some header wires, which I should have done, because I didn't even order the breadboards until quite a bit after. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. Next year, we'll get it right next year. This is the first year we're doing that. In case that wasn't very clear to everybody. <laughs> Previous years have been just like building airframes, which is fun for people that have, um, like, like I did it last year, and we built like a simple airframe in a, what is it like a three inch rocket? Um, oh, it was even we, smaller. It was a yeah. tiny rocket. They are, yeah, they are pretty tiny. But um, this is cool because we can now, now that we're doing like the different tracks, we can talk about avionics and propulsion and all that stuff, so people can specialize yeah. in those more. I think I went, I think last week, I don't remember. Last week was a mess, but I know I talked about, I talked about just like some of the rocketry stuff. Like I showed them a bunch of pictures of like some rocket launches and some of the stuff we did last year. Like launching a rocket on the lake. That was, that was like a, that was a stressful day, but it was probably like a highlight for me. Just, a, I don't know. Well, also like, like everything day. worked. Everything like kind of worked too. It was just a really good day. Yeah. There were many rockets that came down as missiles that day, but none of them were ours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's always a good day. It's, it's always makes you feel good when your rocket's not the one that gets, it goes through the ice. <laughs> Ice and or it like... lands four miles away. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I remember any... that was my first launch. Where... Sorry, what was that? Are there any wires that go that come from blue? We're gonna do that like next. Okay, next. so it's just these, yeah. but it's just the free pins right now that we had from green. Yeah, you should have like four wires connected to green now. Um, oh, what's up? The, um, chip select we just did. Um, that one we set to low, so just tie that to ground or connect it to ground. Oh, which pins a CSP then? CSB is pins four and five, but you only need to tie one of them to ground because they're internally connected. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, it happens a lot um, with like chips like this where they only need seven connections, but they have more because they want to make the package nice and symmetrical or the package is like a standard package. So some of them will be no connect sometimes, and sometimes we'll, they'll connect to the same thing. Okay. Should I start talking about the um the logic level shifter? Yeah. Okay. Um, and we can always backtrack for anyone that needs it, but I'm going to talk about this for now. So the logic level shifter that'll take our five volt um data signal and turn it into like a three point three volt data signal, which basically means instead of being like this high and this low, it's like this high and this low. And that's just because our device, um, we might try it if we give it five volts. I'm not actually sure if this device is five volt tolerant. 
um, is what they'd call it. I checked the dash sheet. I didn't really see anything very clearly on there, but I also might have just missed it. So we're going to use a logical shifter, and hopefully we learn a couple things. Um, so a logical shifter is a pretty simple circuit. Um, you'll find these um, as like integrated circuit um, packages just to make them neater for like board layout. But this one is literally just four MOSFETs. And a MOSFET, for those who aren't super familiar, is just basically a switch that you actuate with an electrical signal. Um, I say switch, it's not. It's a switch. It's a switch. It's a switch. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, we don't need to talk about semiconductor physics right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to compare MOSFETs to relays, but I don't think we have to go that deep. Um, and then it has two pull-up resistors on either side. Um, but basically how this, is, this board is laid out is you have your HV1s through HV4, and those are your signals. And then you have HV, which is just your high voltage input. So in our case, high volts are just going to be 5 volts. So we're going to use the positive on the other end of the breadboard and connect that to the Arduino's 5 volts. Actually, uh, you don't really need to do that because we're only connecting one thing to 5 volts, which is this pin here. So yeah, you can connect high volts to the 5 volts on the Arduino. Tie ground on both sides to the ground column on the breadboard you made before. And then on the Arduino, um, by default, the wires that they use for the I2C protocol are A4. And actually, wait, I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's A4 and A5. Actually, no, your board very conveniently labels them for you. There are two pins next to the buzzer that are labeled SCL and SDA. They connect to the A4 and A5. I don't really remember which ones it is. Um, but SCL will, will be HV1, and then you can do SDA as HV2. It doesn't really matter which one, but um, I'll just say that. And hopefully that uh, can be understood. Sorry. I'm, is this, uh, can you guys tell this is my first time giving like a presentation like this? <laughs> So SCL from the board go from the like Arduino goes to where? Um, that will go to any of the HV1 through HV4s. Um, okay. Those are each a signal, and those will correspond to the LV1. Like so, HV1 corresponds to LV1, and that'll translate the HV1 signal from a five volt signal to a three point three volt signal on the LV1. Okay. And LV1 is the 5 volts. Yeah, and sorry, could you repeat which pins on the Arduino connect to SCL and SDA through the level shifter? So there are pins that are actually labeled SCL and SDA on the Arduino. They're oh, like next to the buzzer. So we can use those okay. instead of using A4 and A5. They're actually connected on the Arduino. Um, I just don't feel like looking up which A4 and A5 is. So you can just use those instead. Mm -hmm. Makes it easier to read, too. It's nice. Um, but yeah, so HV1 will be connect. You, so we'll use HV1 and HV2. HV1, you guys can connect to um, SCL on the Arduino, and HV2, you can connect to SDA on the Arduino. And then LV1 will connect to the clock on the um, MS5607. And then LV2 will connect to, um, I believe, it's SDA. Yeah, SDA on the. Um, MS5607. OK. You might want to go through that again a little more slowly. Yeah. Um, and I'd like show the wires while you just talk it through with the wires. Yeah, I don't have a good webcam set up. But I will show kind of. I'm going to use, I like to use green for the clock. I just, I like doing that. So I think we said that clock is pin um, eight. So that's the one on the opposite side of the supply pin. So I don't know if you guys can see. So it's the opposite corner from the white dot. 
No, no, it's uh, sorry, not the opposite corner, but like on the other side of the board. Oh, sorry, so, sorry. Opposite side of the white dot. So pin eight. So like right there. Right, my white dot is in this corner, and then I plug my clock wire there, and then. I'm going to connect my clock wire to LV1 on the um, on the level shifter board, and then I'm going to use the same color wire to make that nice and clear, and do HV1, and I'm going to connect that to SCL, so it should look something like that. Kind of, I don't know if that's really easy to see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing for, I believe I said the SDA pin was the one that we use. Yeah, SD, SDA to HV2. So, yeah, SDA on the Arduino to HV2. And then. Um, it's going to be pin seven on the breakout board. So then, sorry. Oh yeah. Wait, did I do this wrong? I did this wrong. So yeah, pin seven on the breakout board is going to go to your LB two, and then. Your HV2 is going to connect to your SDA. And you always want the, the ones that start with HV, those are always going to connect to your Arduino. And the ones that start with LV are always going to connect to the MS5607. And that's because the low voltage or the LV device is the MS5607 on this board. And then the high voltage device is the Arduino. They are multiple. Sorry, Echo. Do we have things plugged in to just the HV and LV um, pins? Yeah, so those are going to be the supply pins. So HV will be just 5 volts from the Arduino, okay. and LV will be 3.3 .3 volts from the Arduino, and then both of the grounds are connected to the ground of the Arduino, or the uh, minus, ne the negative um, column on your breadboard. All right. Uh, is anything, are multiple things connected to, SC, uh, to SCL and SDA? No. Okay, so I can just connect these directly. I don't have to connect them to like a. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna add I2C pull-up resistors, um, but that'll be the next step. Come on, get, come on, wire. Please. That's basically the last step. Actually, we're almost done, and then we can go through our Arduino. Um. Yeah, we'll see. We might wanna. I don't. How long do you think Arduino is gonna take? Um, it should be pretty short. Be pretty, yeah, library. you're right. It should be pretty quick. I'm hoping like 15 minutes on that because it's the library is, is already in Arduino IDE. You just have to like use the library manager to add it. And then okay. this sample sketch that is exactly what we need to do to test. Uh, my wire is not going into the pin. Actually, no, I think we can actually skip probably the pull up resistors because the uh, logic level shifter already has pull-ups on it. So I, I tested with the, the shifting resistors, or not the shift, sorry, the, um, the pull-up resistors, but it's probably not necessary here. We, so we can just skip that. And then once you guys have these SDA and SEL wires um, hooked up to the, uh, the logic level shifter and the Arduino, we can just pull the Arduino ID and, and start testing. All right, I'm all set with the wiring. Okay. I think I've done two. How are the people who are making wires as they go doing? Are you guys like also finishing up or are you 
still lagging behind. I'm almost done right now. Wherever I'm, I just finished putting plugging HV2 to SDA. What after that? You, where, where do the level wires go to? So you've got SDL and SDA plugged in on your Arduino. Yeah, HV1 and HV2. Yeah, S SDL and SDA for your Arduino are plugged into HV1 and HV2 respectively. So right then now. you'll need to connect LV1 and LV2 to the MS5607 board. And so the the side that's connected to, like the channel that you have connected to the SCL on the Arduino has to go to pin eight um, on the MS5607. And the that's one that's okay. connected to SDA goes to pin seven. So, so, LV, so LV1 and FE2 have to go to pin eight and pin seven, mm -hmm. respectively. Mm -hmm. So LV1 goes to pin eight and LV2 goes to pin seven. That okay. sounds right. Okay. LV one to pin eight. LV two piece. Yeah, but when we count the pins, we wrap around. We wrap around counterclockwise from the from pin one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to open Arduino IDE and share that. And I can do this as many times as we want. So, okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. The presentation is in Discord if you guys want to open it. And I'm going to share instead my Arduino IDE. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just share my whole screen. That would be better. OK. So first things first, I'm going to plug my Arduino in. And if you guys did anything to mess this up really badly, you might get something in the corner of your like window here that says like, um, I forget what it says, but like couldn't supply enough current to this USB port. That means that you've connected um, like 3.3 volts or five volts to ground. Hopefully you didn't do that because that could be bad for your computer. Um, but if you don't see that and then you said get the nice beep that you've connected the device, then you should be good. Um, anyone get any weird errors when they plugged in their Arduino? I'll take that silence as a no. Um, I think I have this library already in, so let me remove it real quick. So we're going to go to the tools up here in the corner. Manage libraries, and you know, we'll get this pop up here. And basically, Arduino already has like a, a nice big list of included libraries. They're not going to be installed on your machine until you tell it to install them, but it has them listed here so you more conveniently install them. Um, so the one we're going to be using is called like MS5XXX. 
and it should be one result. Roman Schmitz, just install the latest version. That's basically it. Um, then you can go through example sketches. This is kind of similar to what we did to load Blinky on, um, but instead we're going to scroll down here where we have like, I apologize, this is going to be different for you guys because you probably have less libraries than I do. But if you scroll down, you should find that MS5XXX kind of tab, example libraries and custom libraries, that kind of tab. And then we're going to use just test. And I've got that open. Should be able to, I'm just going to check that is the right COM port from my Arduino. So I'm going to upload. Done uploading, sweet. So next tool I'm gonna to use is Serial Monitor. I don't know if you guys, I, I did miss one of these um, meetings. I don't know if we talked about this at all. But basically, whenever you have, a, you wanna print something, oh, that's not good, I did something wrong. A Serial Monitor could be used to like print something on your screen um, for debugging, which is convenient. Let me figure out what I did wrong. I have the same error connecting as you. Yeah, that means we both wired things wrong. So I'm going to unplug my board and see what I did. Okay, I thought that the pull up resistors don't matter, but I'm going to try and add them anyways and see what happens. I'm sorry, could you repeat the um, Arduino setup? Uh, once you're done, I guess. Sure. Um, so we're going to go to tools in the upper left corner, manage libraries. Make sure to type in topics all. That should be the default. Um, and search ms5xxx. Should be only one library. You can just hit install on that. I already have it installed here. And then. If we go to file examples, just like how we did with the Blinky sketch, but so we're gonna keep scrolling down until we find examples from custom libraries. Um, find the library that we're using today, which is that one, the one you just downloaded, and then hit test. That will bring up this sketch. I already have it open, so it didn't open a new one, I guess. Um, and then you just upload that and see if it works. Does anyone have it working? Because I don't, and I know that at least a couple of people don't have it working. Um, I'm actually not able to upload my, like get my Arduino to show up as a calm port. So that, that's fun. Um, one thing to try first is just unplug the wires that you have connected to the Arduino and see if it works then. I just did that already, so. Okay. Yeah, um, if anyone has a mini USB cable, I actually lost mine, but I have this printed out. Um, uh, mine says done uploading. I don't see any errors, but my um, but my light stopped blinking, so I don't know what it was supposed to do. So your light stopped blinking because we basically when you upload a new sketch to the Arduino, it um, removes the old sketch. Oh, so that was a blink. this one does doesn't blink the LED. If you want to see what's happening, you have to click the serial monitor button which is in like the upper right hand corner. 
and that'll like print out information. If it's connected properly, it'll like tell you the temperature and, and pressure from the sensor. And if you have it wrong, like me, then it just says error connecting. And um, I'm gonna try and figure out what I did wrong. No, mine just has nothing on it right now. Um, check that your baud rate says at 9600. That should be the, de the default. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's at 9600. Sometimes it's buggy, so sometimes you can just try closing and opening it again. Make sure the COM port is still correct. Yeah, it's it should be highest COM, correct? Uh, sorry. It should be the highest COM. Ninety six hundred baud rate, not the highest one, just ninety six hundred. Yeah, the, the highest um port, like COM X. I oh, it, it might be, it might not be. Um, the way I usually check it is I'll open Device Manager on my computer. I'll go to COM ports. I'll unplug my Arduino. Okay, so COM17 disappeared, and then when I plug it back in, COM17 reappears. That tells me that must be my Arduino. That's the easiest trick. Upload runs it. Yeah, so no errors are showing up in my serial monitor, but it's just not showing any input right now. Like nothing's coming, uh, nothing's coming up. Mm. Yeah, same with mine. Um, and you guys, the baud rate is definitely 9600. Yeah, it says 9600 baud. Can you do me a favor and open the, or try uploading the example sketch? Is there a Hell World example sketch? Um, there might be. I think it's under USB. No, it's under communication, I thought. All right, well, we're going to make a Hello World sketch real quick. Set up serial dot begin 9600. This creates like a serial object that is initialized with value 9600, which is the baud rate. Serial dot begin 9600. So that's in your setup. Basically, in Arduino ID, your setup is run once whenever the Arduino is reset or turned on, and then the loop runs infinitely. It's, it's basically a while one, a while true loop. Yeah. Um, so there, we're just going to print um, serial dot print ln. That will print into the serial on a new line. Uh, hello world. And then if I don't want hello world like every fraction of a second, I can do like wait uh, delay wait. is the command in this case. I'll do five hundred or one, I'll do it every second, milliseconds. Um, I'll that to my board. You open up serial monitor, hopefully. Hopefully we get some hell worlds. Yep, I got it. Okay. Uh, I don't know why your other system 
other doesn't work then. Um, I would just try re-uploading it and, and doing it again. Sometimes it's just a little bit weird. Like I know sometimes I have to just like do it a couple times before it wants to work. Can you confirm with me? I I don't know if somehow I I have a different version of the example sketch, but in setup of the example sketch, it should say serial that begin ninety six hundred. If it's different from that, then you might have to use a different baud rate. <laughs> yeah, it says you're up again 9600. It just doesn't, it's not even giving, it's not, it doesn't even give me error. So I guess it connects fine. And then it's just not printing anything. Yeah, same. It's just blank. I mean, I, I'm reading the code right now. I maybe like, so maybe sen, it must be something, maybe it's something with like with sensor.read. Hmm. Okay. Right? Because it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't get to, if it gets to print, right? And it should, Printed, that's for sure. But maybe it's something with sensor.read promise or dot read out. Maybe maybe there's an error where it's like waiting infinitely long to get a response and there's no response coming. Yeah, but then we would see error connecting, right? In that case, no. Error connecting is just error connecting, um you know what, I'm I'm not gonna try and go deep into it because I uh Totally honest, don't understand the wire library in Arduino because I have yeah. an I2C driver in Arduino. I've only written I2C drivers and spy drivers and um, STM cube IDE, which uses different libraries. Um, but I think it might think that it's connected, but then when it tries to actually grab a data, um, some like data from the board, it might be just like waiting because it's not coming for some reason, it sent the command wrong. Is there anybody that's having success so far? I'll take the sounds again as a no. <laughs> <laughs> I had this working and then I didn't take a picture of it. And then I assumed that the second time I did it, it would just work. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna stop recording for now. Um...